The US Congress has received a delegation from the Ukrainian armed forces, including soldiers from the far right Azov Battalion. Just a few years ago, Washington banned weapon supplies to the unit, but now the US has welcomed them. Details of the recent meeting emerged when the head of a Ukrainian NGO posted a report from the visit online. Daria Kalinyuk posted a photo showing the Azov soldiers dressed in black suits, along with female members of the Ukrainian army who were in uniform. She explained that during a one-week visit, the female soldiers met with US congressmen and asked for more arms to help Kiev's war effort. They were also interviewed by US media outlets, including Fox News and the New York Times. But while the Capitol Hill meeting was described as the most emotional part of the trip, it didn't go down well with everyone. MAGA Americans were accused of being Nazis and were shot and killed in Capitol Hill. Meanwhile, literal Nazis are being emotionally welcomed in Capitol Hill. Makes sense. Republicans are the real Nazis, say the leftists who proudly welcomed Ukraine's Azov Battalion members to Capitol Hill. Only four years ago, the U.S. Congress banned the supply of weapons to the Ukrainian neo-Nazi Azov Battalion. Today, the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion is emotionally honored on Capitol Hill. A return to a long-standing and despicable practice of honoring Nazi collaborators. Criticism of the visit comes as President Joe Biden's administration battles what has been described as its own domestic extremists. And that's specifically referring to former U.S. President Donald Trump and his Make America Great Again supporters as the U.S. prepares for midterm elections. Biden recently denounced Trump supporters who participated in last year's Capitol Hill protests as a threat to the country's democracy. While the White House press secretary went even further, saying Make America Great Republicans fit the definition of fascists. Bilati spoke to former CIA analyst Larry Johnson, who now heads the consulting firm Berg Associates. This goes back to the, to the dawn of the Cold War with the old Soviet Union. You, Ukraine was seen as a potential area where there were individuals who were opposed to the Soviets and would be sympathetic or empathetic with the West and were recruited and used. So a long-standing intelligence contacts, and I think it really goes through families, generational. And so uh, in, in the course of that, uh, it was OK. We were willing to take people who were anti-Soviet without worrying about whether they were pro-Nazi. There is no such thing as commitment to principle, objective principle in this country. Never has been. If you recall, uh, an Iranian group, the MEC, was identified as a terrorist organization. Now the United States works closely with them. You don't have to look very far on the Internet to find the, the, the Azov folks marching around in Nazi uniforms. They still hold commemorations of the formation of the, uh, the Waffen-SS division that was raised in Ukraine in uh, 1943 by uh, von Wachtel. Remember, one of, the, one of the reasons Ukraine has been so central for U.S. policy over the last 15 years has been because of the Clintons, Bill and Hillary Clinton. Their Clinton Foundation received more money from Ukraine than any other country in the world. And when you realize that Ukraine is one of the poorest countries in Europe or the poorest country in Europe, you've got to ask yourself, what exactly are they buying? What are they getting access to? And so we're getting to see that you have a lot of the American oligarchs who are sitting on boards of Ukrainian companies or their children are, such as Hunter Biden.